Uh, so thanks a lot for coming to this talk. Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, so I'm Stefan Landell, and I'm here today to talk to you about uh, load testing, and in particular with Gatling. Uh, so uh, from my accent, you can hear that I'm French. I live near Paris, and I'm the founder of so, this open source project, uh, Gatling, that I created something like 10 years ago now. Uh, you can see me and check me on Twitter. And for a few years, we've created a company to be the editor of a of Gatling. Uh, so uh, I'll talk to you first about uh, load testing in general, uh, to try to convince you to run load tests, because quite often uh, people don't run as much load tests, as many load tests as they should be. Um, so why should you be running load tests? Uh, the first reason is because quite often uh, the runs, the, the tests that you run in QA are not enough uh, to make sure that your application won't crash in production because uh, your QA environment is not similar to your, uh, to your uh, production environment. You don't have the same kind of traffic, you don't have the same kind of data. And what you really want to guarantee is that your, your application will work on production, not in QA environment. Your users won't use your QA environment. Uh, so you should be interested in uh, running load tests if you have a, a, a large audience, if your applications experience some um, uh, seasonal or unusual peaks like uh, Black Friday or Christmas or some marketing events. Uh, also, if your company uh, has a, a fast growth and you want to have some forecast to make sure that uh, to figure out if your application will be able to uh, withstand the load in six months or one, one year from now, or if you need to, uh, to start some, some new project to adapt to this future load right now, because it will take months to adapt, to implement. Also, if you're just launching a new product. So, because uh, if your users have a poor experience with your application and experience crashes or ju just slowdowns, you will uh, experience losses. Uh, you will damage your sales, you will damage your brands. Uh, also, we quite often hear uh, uh, people saying, oh, but now I run on AWS, so uh, they magically take care of everything, and uh, I can just use auto-scaling to have more machines, so I no longer care about performance. Uh, actually, uh, the cloud is not a silver bullet for that. Even if your application is properly implemented and properly uh, works with uh, auto-scaling, if you just spawn a huge number of instances, uh, you, will just you will also increase your reporting costs. And also, a uh, larger cluster uh, tends to be more complex to operate than smaller ones. And finally, uh, as we go also with the cloud, we also tend to go with microservices-oriented architecture, where uh, just one failing component can make your whole system uh, fail like dominoes. So, uh, yeah, the cloud is not a silver bullet and won't s solve your performance issues for you. Um, when should you be running load tests? Uh, back in the old days, we, tend to, uh, we tended to run load tests just once or twice a year, uh, typically after months of development. Uh, in these kind of situations, um, the load tests uh, were kind of bringers of bad news, like, oh, uh, we've messed up with the, the architecture, uh, or uh, we've chosen a framework that's not efficient enough, how can we possibly fix that in just, a w in just one week? Or sometimes just that, yeah, the, the performance issue uh, comes from a decision made si six months ago, and you've built on top of this decision. So it's very hard to revisit and reconsider and fix things in just a few days. So nowadays, we've, uh, we are in the DevOps and continuous integration era, and we've kind of understood that the the value of tests is to bring quick feedback, so things can be quickly fixed. So uh, try not to run load tests just once or twice a year. Uh, try to run them, um, probably not on every commit, but at least once a week or once, uh, or once a day. Also, this way you'll be able to make sure that your load tests are properly maintained, that they don't rot. And that if you want to run a new load test campaign in six months from now, uh, the, the load tests have been, uh, have been maintained in between when the application has, has changed. Um, also, who should be running the load test? Uh, also, back in the old days, um, load tests were uh, the kind of the castle of a, a small team of experts. Uh, and sometimes they were not really performance experts, but experts on, on actually some, some specific load test tool, typically a load runner. Um, and in this kind of organization, this central team and usually ended up being a kind of bottleneck for the organization uh, because they were not part of the project team. Uh, so, uh, um, and 
it, re it was pretty hard to collaborate with those teams uh, because they, they were not part of the team, so they had to be onboarded, they didn't know the application, and on the contrary, uh, the project team couldn't review the test and make sure that they were properly implemented and meaningful. Um, so what's important to understand is that uh, load testing is a kind of cross-field concern. Like you need, uh, you probably need the develop, you need definitely the de developers. Uh, because they are the most familiar with the application and because they are the most suited to implement and maintain the load test when they change the application. Then you need the ops because they will be the ones on the front line when the application will start crashing in production. Uh, and you probably need some skills like the DBA to help you with uh, tuning the SQL, the SQL queries. You probably need QA, still need QA people uh, because they'll to think about the use cases and typical, typically the unusual non-nominal ones where developers tend to think only about the happy path. Um, and finally, you probably need some experts, but not to craft and maintain the test, but to help with fixing the performance issues where they would have really high value. Um, back in the days also, it was pretty complicated to run load tests because load testing is an iterative process. You need to deploy your application in a pre prod environment, run a load test, uh, figure out some performance issue, implement an, uh, a fix that you will want to validate. So you need to redeploy again. And, uh, and, and when doing that, maybe you just fix the first bottleneck and there's a second one and you still don't meet your performance requirements. So you need to uh, fix the new bug and iterate over and over again. And uh, 10 years ago, that was something that was pretty complicated to implement. But nowadays, we have lots of technologies to use with that. Uh, we have all the cloud providers to help with provisioning, and we have also lots of different technologies like uh, Docker or whatever to, uh, to, to help package the application and deploy it very fast. Very fast. And also, we have lots of tooling now for uh, doing monitoring to figure out where the performance issues are in your, in your application. And so the, final, the, the, the last break you need for uh, uh, of tooling you need to, uh, for running load tests is a load injector. So a load injector uh, is a tool that lets you uh, generate network traffic. Um, and beware, those tools are not web browsers. Uh, they won't execute a JavaScript, which is usually not something very uh, important because uh, really you want to, have to check to load test what happens on the server side. Uh, they don't, headless browsers just use too much memory and too much, uh, too much CPU to be uh, able to be used at, at scale. Uh, also, you want tools that let you implement users' behaviors uh, with all the, data, uh, all the virtual users uh, using different data, set, data sets. Uh, the reason for that is that if your load test is about um, running the same request with the same payload over and over again against your application, you won't be testing your application. You will, be t you, you will be testing your caches, the caches in your database, the, your, the caches in your web servers, and also um, your just-in-time compiler, if you're on technology like Java, uh, will, uh, implement, will uh, trigger some um, su super-fast optimization for this single path in your application, but those optimizations won't be, uh, meaning, uh, won't be matching what, ha what would happen on your live system. So you really need to introduce some, some kind of statistical distribution in your test data and in your user's behavior to match what happens on your system. Uh, you need so also to uh, figure out which kind of metrics you want to use to uh, measure performance. Uh, in the load test and uh, monitoring industry for a very long time, we are focused on average values and standard deviations. Forget about those. Those are very bad metrics. If you have a good average value, it doesn't mean that you don't have 20% of your traffic uh, off. Uh, all the, in this animation, all those different distributions have the, have the same average and standard deviations. So forget about those. Uh, an interesting metric could be, uh, can be percentiles. So percentiles are thresholds. Uh, the 90th percentile is the value above 90% of your values. The 100th percentile is a maximum value. Uh, those are pretty handy to de define SLAs. Like I want in 90% of the cases, my response time to be below one second. Uh, if you have a tool that provides you with percentiles, beware, check how, how it's being implemented. Because lots of implementation are just lies. Like, for example, uh, on, if you check on AWS on CloudWatch, what they give you is actually an average of percentiles. They measure a percentile uh, every second, and then they give you the group by one minute, and give you the average value in one minute. Okay? It's way easier to compute and way cheaper to store. The problem with that is it's just broken math. 
uh, if you want to get convinced. Uh, thing, you've measured the maximum every second, and you want the overall maximum on, on one minute. You, want co you don't want to compute the average of the local maxima. You want to, to, to get the maximum of the maxima. So if you, if you compute averages, you will just uh, smoothen all your hiccups. Uh, you want a tool that provides you with a different injection profiles, uh, like um, it's the shape of the traffic. Uh, like you, you might be interested in running capacity tests, uh, where you progressively increase the, the load to find the sweet spot of your application. You will be also, uh, you can be interested in, in stress tests, where you want to figure out how your application behaves during a, 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 a peak of traffic and afterward. Also, if it properly recovers or it's just broken, you've lost data, you need to re restart, reboot the service. Uh, you might be also interested in running so test where you you run a very st steady state for a long time and try to uh, to detect uh, resources leaks like connection or memory leaks. Uh, finally, we might find a tool that provides you with different uh, workload models. Um, open workload model is where you uh, define the basically the arrival rate of the users, and they just keep on arriving whatever happens uh, on, the, on the application. A closed uh, close workload model is where you define the number of concurrent users. This model is only su suited if your application has such architecture where they have a queue in front of it and they, ca uh, they, they can push the excess, um, the excess of traffic into this queue when it's at full capacity. That's what you can see sometimes in ticketing or in gaming platform. Uh, if your application is not architectured this way, don't use a closed workload model. Don't define your load profile as number of concurrent users because you would introduce behaviors that only exist in your lab and not on your production system. A few words about getting open source. Uh, so getting is pretty popular. It's being used all over the world in lots of different companies from uh, ranging from small startups to very high um, uh, pure web players, very large companies. Uh, it provides you with a wide range of uh, supported protocols. Uh, our main focus is still on HTTP, but we support uh, many other ones. And there's also lots of community plugins. Uh, what's interesting with Gatling is that it provides you with a load test as code. Uh, uh, and contrary to uh, historical products that provides you with a, a graphical user interface. Uh, it runs on the JVM. Uh, historically, we supported uh, Scala for crafting the test, but in the, the version that we re we're about to release in a probably next week, we also support Java and Kotlin. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty, pretty easy to read if you haven't, uh, if the first time that you made some Gatling. And it integrates nicely with the build tools such as Maven, Gradle, and SBT. As it's code, uh, you can easily store the test in Git and have them reviewed uh, with pull requests. Uh, so it's way, way easier to maintain than when you have a, a, a tool with a graphical user interface. Uh, it can generate very high throughput. Uh, of course, it really depends on your use case, but uh, if you're just, you, you can possibly generate uh, several hundreds of thousands of requests from one single box. Uh, also, it integrates nicely with uh, uh, CI solutions. Like you can define uh, what's called assertions, which are acceptance criteria. Like you can have your CI pipeline fail if you don't, don't meet those criteria, such as uh, the error ratio is above a given th threshold, or the 90th percentile of the response time is above this, uh, a given threshold. Uh, a few words also about Getting Enterprise. Uh, so Getting Enterprise uh, is a server. Uh, it's an app server uh, that uh, uh, lets you um, control, uh, administrate all your Getting tests uh, in your organization. Uh, provides you with way more metrics than what's uh, implemented in your personal version. Like uh, it takes care of uh, deploying your, your injectors, meaning the machines that will actually generate the load. Uh, uh, they can uh, uh, deploy them on. Uh, it can deploy them on AW on most major cloud providers and also Kubernetes. Uh, it can integrate with uh, lots of CI solutions. Also integrate with Grafana. Uh, it's available, self-hosted. Also, we have launched a, a SaaS solution, so it can generate load from the internet, and you don't have to host anything. It's also available in the Azure and AWS marketplace, so it's pretty easy to purchase if you're an AWS only or an Azure customer. Uh, if you want to dig deeper, uh, what do you, uh, well, it's a vendor talk, so remember to try it for yourself. Uh, um, there's lots of resources online, uh, including Gatling Academy, uh, which is uh, online trainings. Uh, it's free, so really feel free to, to give it a try. Uh, also, we have a booth over there, so really feel free to, dro to, uh, to drop by. And if you, if you cannot, we also have a community uh, Google group, so feel free to join. 
thank you very much. And uh, yeah, if you have some, 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 have some questions, thank you. Okay, good. Oh. So there's a question over here. What do you use to load the TRST? I don't know what it stands for. Test. Test. Oh, sorry. What do you use to load test Gatling itself? Ah, how do we? So how do we? Sh um, we we don't compare with competitors. Uh, what we do is uh, we um, we have some uh, some some standard benchmarks, and we compare with one reason, uh, one version to another. Um, and we'll also be running uh, soon a new, uh, a new Lotus internal campaign, uh, typically for the cloud solution, because we want to, uh, to investigate. Uh, we are, we'll be upgrading the kernel versions on our uh, cloud images, uh, also check the, the impact of the different Java versions, uh, compare with the JDK uh, 8 and 11 and 17, and also we want to check the... Um, AMD versus uh, ARM architectures. Typically on AWS, we want to check the new instances. And then we do some profiling uh, during the test uh, with a, a tool named uh, Async Profiler to try to figure out the bottlenecks in, in our own code. Does it answer your question? Yeah, thank yeah? you. Cool. Yeah? Yeah. So uh, the question is, uh, how can uh, can you define the different threshold uh, from your CI solution? Uh, yes, because what you can do is uh, you can uh, you can uh, as its code uh, you can pass parameters typically as system properties. So you pass a set of system properties and resolve those system properties in your code, possibly providing default values. Thank you. Okay. Yes. So you have different options. Uh, if you want to, with the Gatling Enterprise, deploy in the injectors. Um, so you can either deploy, uh, indeed, um, so you would configure your own uh, AWS credentials uh, for the self-hosted uh, version. And uh, so it would ind indeed uh, spawn uh, an EC2 instance. Uh, you would select the, the type of instance you want. You would select if you want a spot instance or not. And, uh, and getting Enterprise so would spawn the instance, uh, deploy the test on, on it, trigger the load test, and, sh and uh, destroy the instance once the test is done. Also, we support Kubernetes and OpenShift, so you can, you can use uh, EKS on AWS to host your injectors. Thank you. Welcome. And in this case, w it's similar. We, 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 we create the pods, create the, uh, the ingress rules, and then destroy all the resources once the test is done. I think we're good. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you. And have a great day. Thank you. <laughs>